Welcome back to episode two of Philosophies of Food. I am your host, Chris Harrison. Starting off our series of peasant dishes, tonight is Irish stew. At least my take on Irish stew. Changed it up a little bit. Rather than using lamb, I'm using beef. And we're going to feature yeah, uh, sorry, sweet potatoes, which are different than yams. And if you want to know the difference, eventually I'll tell you. Our featured drink for the evening, to go along with it, since it is in the spirit of the Irish, is the Irish Car Bomb, made with Guinness, Baileys, and whiskey. Once again, I'll show you that later as well. But before we can get anything going, let's get our stuff in the slow cooker. Alright, let's get started. I've chosen to do my stews in a slow cooker, mostly because you can throw it in in the morning, Go off and do whatever you have to do. Come back six, seven hours, and it's ready to go. You can also do the same thing using a pressure cooker, or if you want to make it quickly, you can just boil it all up in a pot. It won't taste quite as good because it won't. All the flavors won't get just slow cooked right in there, but it'll still be tasty. You can also substitute any of the vegetables. You can add things like turnip, which I haven't. You can also swap out the beef for lamb. You can even do it just strictly vegetarian. But, what I've decided and what we're featuring is sweet potato. All you want to do with sweet potatoes is to start off, peel them up, clean them, get all of the nasty little bits chopped out, and then just hack it into big pieces. A lot of people don't realize the difference between a sweet potato and a yam, and even grocery stores will often call a sweet potato a yam, or they'll would call it a sweet potato yam to qualify it. Real yams are not even of the same family as a sweet potato. They are, I think they're in the same genus, but they're not even closely related species-wise. Real yams can grow up to seven feet and weigh about 150 pounds. Whereas a sweet potato, yeah, you'll find some big sweet potatoes, but that's, it's still a sweet potato, not a real yam. The only real yam you're gonna find is more than likely going to be chopped up and sealed in a bag. But, flavor-wise, they're pretty much interchangeable. The other thing we're going to use is just red potatoes this time for the sake of flavor and color. We're going to use celery, carrots, and a little bit of onion, which we still have white onion and carrots left over from last week's show. Let's use those. And can I that? I've gone ahead and already chopped up all of our vegetables and gotten our meat ready and thrown it in the slow cooker. If you don't feel like chopping your own beef, most grocery stores right now will carry a stewing beef, which is going to more than likely be leftovers from a shoulder or something that they weren't using. It's still perfectly fine beef, and it's usually really cheap. So, no, I even opt for that if I don't feel like chopping up a steak. One thing you are going to want to do with the beef is just quickly brown it, just sear it in a frying pan real quick. This is where I like to add the garlic to this dish because I add garlic to everything. A little bit of olive oil and some garlic just sears that flavor real quick into the outside of the meat. Throw it in the pot. Now, the trick to Irish stew is the seasoning, which I've taken a little bit of liberties with and brought in my own spices. I usually use a mortar and pestle, especially if I'm using herbs, especially dried herbs, to grind everything up and get the flavors working together. Specifically for tonight, I'm using coriander, caraway seeds, rosemary, thyme, a little bit of basil, sea salt, just because it has it has that salt flavor, but it's not overpowering. A little bit of cracked pepper, and a few other certain things that are just, they'll show up on the recipe to follow. Once you've done this, toss it in the pot, and get it ready to go. Now that we've thrown in our seasonings into the mix, we're just going to give it a quick stir up and then add the water. In a slow cooker, you want to add just enough water to come up even with the vegetables and where everything's sitting. Just enough to work that flavor through. Too little water, the stuff on top isn't going to really cook. Your potatoes are going to stay firm, your yams are going to stay too hard. It's not going to work out right. Too much, too much isn't a bad thing, but then you're going to be left with a lot of fluid and a lot of gravy. You're going to have a really, really sloppy stew, which isn't a bad thing. So, the last little bit, the one thing you really want to remember here, especially if you're using a beef stew, is that because we're just doing our beef from chopped in, 
We don't have any of those good drippings to get good beef and the flavor into the water. If you have leftover roast beef, you can throw in the gravy from the other night, do it that way. Or you can just really simply add a small package of beef base, an oxo cube, or I use just coarse axles. Piece of cake. Well, now that that's in, let's turn her on low, and I'll see you guys in about six hours when everything's ready. Well, I hope you guys have had a productive day. Our stew is just about ready, so it's time to get our biscuits in the oven. Can't have a good stew without good biscuits. The other thing I love about using a slow cooker is that as soon as you step in the door after your day, you can already smell your dinner, like just verging on being ready. It's the most fantastic thing to come home to. It's like coming home to a home cooking oven. You know, yourself. Well, the biscuit recipe that I'm going to use, pretty simple, straightforward one. Just flour, sugar, salt, a little bit of baking powder, butter, and milk. First off, you want to mix all of your dry ingredients together. Give them a quick whisk, get them all blended. We're going to add our butter that we've softened up a little bit. Get that all mixed in. Now, if you have a preference between salted and unsalted butter, that's up to you. Slowly add your milk. Doesn't make an overly sweet biscuit, but it's light, it's fluffy, and a really great accompaniment. So I might as well tell you guys what I'm drinking tonight too. Featured from the Andrew Hilton in Lethbridge, we're drinking Black Beast Stout. Mmm, nice dark stout with an oatmeal finish. Once you've got it mixed up, you want to get it to a workable, doughy consistency. Something that you can pick up with your hands and work with. Because we're going to lay it down on a flat cutting board, roll it out with either a rolling pin or a large drinking glass to 6 millimeters thick, and cut it into circles, throw it on a baking pan, pop it in the oven. If you want them to come out looking like lips, give the top just a small slice, not all the way through, just part way through, and it'll bubble up and it'll look like you have a nice pair of lips sitting beside your plate of stew.